Welcome to another episode of We Don't Die. I'm your host, Sandra Champlain, author of the international bestseller called We Don't Die, A Skeptic's Discovery of Life After Death. On the show today, we have Caroline Sutherland. Caroline is a medical intuitive author, radio host, teacher, and innovative leader in the fields of nutrition and energy medicine. She's the popular Hay House author of The Body Knows book series. Caroline has a vast clinical background as an allergy testing technician in environmental medicine, where her intuitive gift developed. In the early 1980s, while working as a physician's assistant, she began to receive intuitive impressions about the patients, an experience which groomed her to become one of the most sought-after medical intuitives today. Caroline was raised in a medical family. Both her father and grandfather were medical doctors. As a child, the blueprint of her family lineage created important seeds for her future career as a medical intuitive. For now, over 35 years, she has lectured internationally on the subject of health education and medical intuition, and her intuitive impressions have positively affected the lives of thousands of people. Her website is carolinesutherland.com, and you can meet Caroline live and in person at the upcoming Soul Summit Scottsdale, September 12th through 15th, 2019, as she is one of the featured presenters. And you can visit soulsummitscottsdale.org to find out more about that. Caroline, a warm welcome to We Don't Die Radio. It's wonderful to be with you, Sandra. Thank you so much. Oh, just thrilled. Just thrilled. Love meeting new people, finding out new things. And as always, we love to share evidence of the afterlife, but also empowering people to live great lives here on the show and medical intuition and just researching your books and you, I thought, wow, this is, you're definitely someone who I'd love to introduce to the listeners. You bet. Well, it's been, it's been quite a, quite a career. I really, really, and continue to, and have really enjoyed it. And as you say in my background, how I got started, all these things are very, very unexpected, but of course they're all orchestrated from a higher plane. <laughs> so feel free to ask me any questions you want. Oh, absolutely. Well, let's just hear a little bit about your story. And I know I read some of it, but I think it's really interesting how you got about this line of work. If you wouldn't mind telling us a little bit yeah. more words. Yeah. Well, you know, as I just said, never underestimate the power of the universe. And there is a force, a source, a flow, the creator, whatever you want to call it, another plane of existence that is orchestrating our lives on a daily, moment-by-moment basis. And in the 1980s, in the early 1980s, I began to display early warning signs of multiple sclerosis. I was just having some of the classic symptoms of bumping into things, losing my memory, and, you know, just the not feeling balanced on my feet, just different things that that were happening that had my doctor quite puzzled. And so she sent me to a doctor who specialized in environmental medicine. Environmental medicine is the branch of medicine that is involved with everything that a person touches, everything that they are potentially breathing, everything they're eating, and the effects of those elements on that body That's what is tested in an environmental medicine clinic. I went to the clinic and it was discovered that most of the things that I was eating and then something that you've probably discussed on this show with other experts in the health field, something called candidiasis, chronic candidiasis or the yeast syndrome. And that was very, very rampant. Uh, in within my body because of the overuse of antibiotics for many years for respiratory tract infections. And a lot of people don't realize that this yeast, this growing fungus, can really take a person down, wear them down, cause all kinds of symptoms, especially MS symptoms. And I think that a lot of the people that are dealing with MS in the United States and other places as well are just dealing with a overgrowth of this yeast. So nevertheless, I was treated. I was symptom-free in four weeks, and I went, yippee, this is something I've got to start immersing myself That's in. That's fast, four yeah, weeks. Yeah, so I started researching and, 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 and writing and beating the drum and just getting out there. And, and then this physician uh, who was treating me asked me to come and work for him 
as an allergy testing technician, and I had to learn to use special subtle energy equipment from Germany. And as I was using this equipment and testing all these patients, I became extremely psychic around the body. I just knew uh, things that were going on with these patients before I even met them. And coupled with this, I think learning a very simple meditation practice, and this is something that I'm sure you've spoken about and the the importance of being able to tune in, <clears throat> being able to stay quiet, because if we can stay quiet and if we can cut out all those voices and sounds, we can hear the inner voice, the still, small voice that resides within every single person, the voice of intuition. So that switched on, and then I was able to receive what would be termed inner guidance about patients, which I was able to then give to the doctor and say on little post-it notes on their charts, there's, there's a remedy in the pharmacy, right-hand corner, shelf number three, that could be useful and it would turn out to be something for that person's immune system or something that would affect and help them with their thought processes or digestion. And I just went with it. And it was interesting. I was really, really blessed that he, in lots of times, would 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 incorporate some of the um, instincts that I had. Excuse me, into his treatment protocols, and we were very, very, very successful in that clinic. Within three months of my doing that testing, we had over a year long uh, waiting list for new patients. So it was incredible. And then by the time I left. A clinical setting, I had hands-on with either the treatment or assessment of over 55,000 patient visits. Wow. And I was just bang on with each of these things. And the funny thing is, I still continue to be like that. In other words, as soon as I connect with a person, either by their picture, uh, talking to, with them on the phone or an email that comes in, or they can describe somebody else like their son or their cousin... I just get this very clear, very practical health-related information. It's not airy-fairy. It's not, oh, I see a dark, you know, a dark light, or oh, I see, you know, the color pink. Mm, thank you very much. Lovely. But that's not helping if the person's still having headaches and belly aches, et cetera. So it's very practical, and it's based on <clears throat> all my years and all my patient visits of working in environmental medicine, which I did until 1995, and then I... I thought, you know, no, I don't want to stay in a clinical setting. We've got to take the message, take it out to the people. And I started giving presentations, doing my own work, seeing clients. And then Louise Hay discovered me. And she is the founder of Hay House Publishing yes. in Southern California. And so then the career just, you know, the trajectory just took off. And that was a whole other different thing, which is really quite wonderful. A very wonderful Louise Hay, mm -hmm. so special to yeah. so many of us throughout the years yeah. for so many things. When you first worked with your the physician as a physician's assistant, uh, did the physician think, I, I don't know where you're getting this from, but it's working, so let's just keep on going? I mean, I just... Well, the interesting thing was that he was very spiritual. Oh. He was a very, very spiritual man, as well as being extremely practical and, 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 and brilliant, really. Um, and very innovative in the field of environmental medicine, which in those days in the 1980s was a very new thing. Of course, now everyone's dealing in environmental medicine. Everyone knows what their allergies are and what foods to avoid. And, you know, people are very familiar <clears throat> excuse me, with the yeast syndrome, which they weren't in those days. And so he was, he was well ahead of his time. And somehow we just connected and had a great connection in a clinical setting and he just gave me full reign, not like I would take over with any of the patients, but I would just put in these little post-it notes or just mention little things that I could 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 detect that were beyond beyond the equipment. You know, I'd be given, for example, I was given every, we would see over 50 patients every single day and I would test over 200 tests on each patient. So that was a lot. Of testing. Yes. And so you become very instinctive when you're doing this. You can't do this just by onesie twosies. It's it's seeing the broad brush. It's the broad picture of that person. And in fact, when I do 
um, consultations and readings to this day for people around the world, I just will pull up the information and the big thing I say to the person is stay quiet. Don't say anything. And all this information comes in about that person. And most particularly what will come in is, some, you know, the big question, something happened, something happened. And it feels to me like it was two and a half years ago or five years ago, whatever the thing was, a big thing that took them down like a tree starting to fall in the forest. So we have to go in and assist with the mental and emotional, the deeply troubled part that has basically pulled a pin out of that health equation and is starting to cause that person to go down. So we have to find that. And then what we want to do is correct the mental state, improve the mental state. And that's done through hypnosis. And I have uh, many, many hypnosis MP3 um, CD downloads that I will pick the right one and send that along with my recap of my discussion with the client. I will send that as well. And they start using that on a daily basis. And that starts to lift lift out that pattern because our mind is so strong and can you know we can just go into that well into that pit so easily unless we pull the person out through subconscious programming which i think is very much part of the wellness equation so that's part of it and then just the person stays quiet and i just pull it up what's going on on the physical it's always very practical it's always about what can we do to correct and as you know, it's illegal to diagnose. A medical doctor can diagnose and a medical doctor can treat, but nobody else can legally do that. Yes. So it's always suggestions. This would be useful. This is something that could be useful to do. So it's always about correction. It's never about what's wrong because in essence, there's really nothing wrong. It's a body that's out of balance. And how can we correct that and bring that imbalance into balance, and it usually happens quite quickly, and it's very much a matter of the person being compliant, but I have a bit of a way, <laughs> a bit of a way with people where they kind of get it. Hey, this Caroline, she's got a few good suggestions. <laughs> let's, do, let's do this. And so I've been really, really fortunate that, you know, I just seem to be able to connect with people, make things practical, and offer them hope. Look at these people that are dealing with all kinds of, of situations that they find themselves in. And if we can give them hope, change the way they think, and give them some practical suggestions, then, of course, the, there's going to be a change and improvement, which is wonderful. Oh, I love that you're also working with the subconscious mind. It's, yeah. So many of us, are, yeah. it's not, yeah, I don't want to say it's not spoken a lot about, but I don't think in our everyday lives we're really thinking about the subconscious, but our, so yeah. much we are programmed. So you need to get into that subconscious mm -hmm. mind and then also have the people change their habits. And I love that you're going in on the mental and emotional as well because, yeah, you can tell somebody to stop eating corn, right? Yes. <laughs> but yes. if you go back and there's some things that need to be unsurfaced, you, know, you just yeah. can't mask symptoms. You just have to get to the root of them. Yes. Wow. And it, the, the, the question is, I mean, it's just so deep and these people are so, so wonderful and one has to have so much compassion for them because just even taking the walk on this planet is in and of itself, it is a, a, a tremendous uh, load for people. It can be a tremendous challenge. And so, you know, I have a lot of, of, of really deep understanding and compassion for the walk and people are taking it and they're doing their best and trying to stay positive and trying to keep one foot in front of the other <laughs> when their when their lives on the physical plane are changing and and it's hard to deal with but this is the topic that you talk about in your in your radio show on a weekly basis is that that if we realize that there is another plane of existence and this is the script this is the script that we were given and now we're playing it out, and how can we work with this script and be as positive as we can, be a role model for others, knowing that the whole, that life and the whole kind of um, scenario 
the play, if you will, of life is, is unfolding just as it should. Even the hard parts are exactly where we need to be at a particular time. And then just know that we're not alone. We're mm-hmm. shepherded and guided by great master beings, by God, him or herself, our guides, whatever we have with us. We're not doing this by ourselves, and and we're being watched. I believe that we are being observed by these higher powers to see how we are actually evolving on the physical plane. And when somebody's going through something very hard and very traumatic, I believe that we are, the love is poured on for us at all times, but how well we go through these lessons that are being brought to us, how well we actually master these stages in our life counts. That's what I believe, because I believe it's all, it's all, I wouldn't want to say recorded, but it's all, there's a stamp, if you will. There's, there's, there's nothing that, that is wasted, nothing that is not absor- observed, nothing that is not known. Everything is known and everything carries weight. And so what does that do? That puts us into a place of, of really uh, feeling the, the depth of the higher physical mastery. And everything that we do is part of that higher physical mastery. Now, does it also mean that we can't have fun and enjoy being on the earth plane? Absolutely. But when we go through this tough stuff, these are lessons that we're learning because we said we would learn these lessons. Oh, okay, that sounds okay. Uh, at a higher plane before we were born, I think I can probably handle that. Then we're more down here actually doing the thing. Like, Did I say I would <laughs> agree to this? <laughs> you know, like, oh, dear. Okay, well, if I did, I'm, I'm in it and I'm doing it. So it, there's a lot happening. There's a just uh, as, as, as you have said and as, as, many of your guests will have said, this is not just, it's, life is not just the way that it, it appears. There are other things that are going on. And when you have a chance, as I have had and many of your guests have had, to see the other side through a near-death experience, it makes, it brings that home in kind of very, very graphic and very real way which then changes one's life, and, and, and you just don't view life the same way ever again. Caroline, can I ask you to share a little bit about that? I, I was just going to ask you, what gives you your faith that there is an afterlife? And, um, yeah. And when, yeah, if you wouldn't mind sharing that, and when was it? Absolutely. Roughly? This was in 1995, mm-hmm. and I was driving along a little country road, a two-way road, cars coming that way, I'm going this way in Washington State, northwestern Washington, and I was on my way for a massage, to a, ma- a massage appointment, and I was doing my left turn in my little white convertible, and all of a sudden I was hit from behind um, by a blue pickup truck. Now, interestingly enough, two days before this, I had a dream. I had a dream that I was going to an event And dreams are very important when people start changing their diets and taking the junk out of the diet. Dreams are much more vivid and 25% of dreams are precognitive. So I had a dream two nights before that I was going to a function and I was told where I could park my car. And so I was given a couple of choices. I was given the choice of parking Um, in the minister's spot. Minister's not here today. You can park in his spot. No, I didn't, that didn't feel right. You can park over there by the grave, by the graveyard. I could see people getting out of their cars over by the graveyard. No, that's not quite right. And then they said, well, there's an additional parking lot, parking area down by the country road by a grassy ditch. Lots of parking down there. Okay, fine. I'll go there. And then, two days later, when I was hit by that pickup truck, I got pushed from my left turn right to the side of the road, and there I was with my hands tightly holding onto the the wheel of the car, 
and I popped out, popped right out, and I saw the other side. I just gripped the wheel, and I was out. And I just went, in my mind, I went, mm, this is it. And I saw the other side, and it was all light, tremendous light, a type of a light that you don't see um, on Earth that I've never seen. I don't know what other people have seen, but it was that kind of rarefied light. And I felt a pulse, a ba-boom, ba-boom, ba-boom. And what that felt like was the mind of God or the pulse of God. And I could see the whole thing. It was almost like you think about ants and an ant hill. Mm -hmm. And you could see all these interactions, little points of light of people connecting. And that's when I was shown that everything has weight. Nothing is wasted and nothing is random. Even everything that's going on in the world today, you think of wars and conflict. None of that is random. It's all orchestrated by our thoughts. Our thoughts, those collective thoughts, they are what are creating whatever's going on in the planet. And so I got to see this, these points of light, and then I was able to interact with people who were waiting to be reborn. And telepathically, this is all telepathic, I'm sure it happened in less than 30 seconds, I saw everything. Wow. And they told me telepathically how fortunate I was to be on the earth at this time and that they clearly had cycled in, cycled out, cycled in, cycled out and had not attained that level of consciousness and awareness that we are talking about right now. They hadn't, they'd either had not achieved it or they'd squandered opportunities to wake up and be aware and alert. So they spoke to me and said, and impressed upon me, if you will, how fortunate I was at this time to actually be alive and to, to be appreciative of the fact that I was alive, that nothing was more important than the fact that I was alive. And so that was very, very amazing. And the mere fact that it's all orchestrated, this is not random. Everything is orchestrated. And then I dropped back <clears throat> into my body. My hands were on the steering wheel of my car. My car was upright. Remember, this was a convertible. And I was powering through that very same grassy ditch with the little dandelions and everything that I had seen in my dream two nights before. And I ended up literally less than a foot from a sign that said 50 miles an hour and stop, my car stopped. And the other guy in the pickup, he was overturned on the other side of the road. And this was one of those drivers that didn't have any insurance. I don't know how, but somebody dialed up 911. The police were there. The ambulance was there, the fire truck. And I, apart from a whiplash, which I was treated for, I was absolutely fine. And I just had a very, very clear understanding of life is short very precious, and this is not to be squandered. I thank you for sharing that. And so many things just resonated with me. To What if we all really lived life waking up appreciative that we're alive, feeling fortunate that we're here on the earth? When things go yeah. wrong, instead of feeling and blaming someone else, hey, what if I picked this? Mm -hmm. maybe, maybe this was orchestrated for me to learn something. Yeah. Oh, yes. And these are high, high lessons and high learnings that not everyone can do successfully. And because we stay stuck in these things that this had happened and that had happened, that's why people get sick. And I wrote another book called Direct Hit about how my second husband and his activities on the Internet caused the breakdown of my second marriage, which was a woefully, woefully wounding on a physical level, physical plane experience. But I knew, Caroline, Caroline, you pull up your bootstraps, you eat right, you get your sleep, you take your supplements, you work on your subconscious programming, you say, yes, okay, I agree to this, because I knew that if I stayed wallowing in the woe is me and the despair, I knew 
that that could manifest a very serious illness. And, and that's one of the things I teach is don't stay in it. Use it to move forward and just pull it, all your tools that you can together to get through these things as, as quickly and with as much grace as you possibly can. And that, of course, is where a spiritual, having a spiritual foundation is concerned, a really strong spiritual foundation, be it, who knows, be it church, be it synagogue, be it meditation, whatever the thing is, chanting, all of that having a strong, strong spiritual foundation and a belief that there is a higher power, that we are not alone. That's what will get us through. And I'm a bit concerned about a lot of young people who don't have that now, that that's not part of their lifestyle. It's very much a hedonistic, Mm -hmm. um, self-centered lifestyle. Oh, we don't need any of that. You know, our parents going to church or being in a meditation group. But I think, you know, hopefully they'll they'll come to it at some point, hopefully. I I often talk about the gift of grief, and as much as mm-hmm. grief can be painful, it can be the yeah. thing that gets us on our spiritual journey. Yeah. Do you feel like with the book you were just talking about and your husband and things like that, when things get really tough in our life, that that like how does that help us in our current life and does that even help us with other people to be able to serve others yes well i found that to have been tremendously useful if i piece it apart on a physical plane i can still kind of you know do my little you know of course. moment right you're, you're human but, yes. <laughs> yeah. yes but i found that's been so useful for understanding people going through things. I'm at the stage in life now where I have, you know, a number of elderly friends and a number of my actual um, compatriots, people who are in my age group, their husbands might be dying suddenly or somebody develops a serious illness. I have much more understanding of the finite nature of life and, and, and the words just seem to be there for me to be able to comfort them and, and, and just not in a Pollyanna way, but just in a really kind of an understanding, compassionate way. So I think having gone through those things myself, that has enabled me to have more understanding of others. Yes, you bet. Yeah, thank you for that. Yeah, even with myself, had I not experienced deep grief, I could never go on to write about mm-hmm. it. And, yeah. And so much more. I wouldn't mind talking a little bit about The Body Knows. Not everybody's yeah. going to be able to chat with you one-on-one. And I know for our listener, if you go to carolinesutherland.com, you actually can book appointments with you, which is great. Um, and yeah. You, and you offer so much. So thank you for that. But how can we find out and use your books and even your radio show? I was delighted to go on Hay House Radio and see just many, 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 many episodes with you. Very exciting to be able to listen to that. But if you could talk to us a little bit about your books and your show. Yes, absolutely. Well, my background is in writing. I was a fashion writer for many years for a city newspaper and glossy magazine. So I have a a writing background, which is a tremendous thrill. And then when I experienced this amazing turnaround in my own health that was done in a very simple way, it wasn't complicated. It wasn't a surgical procedure. It was just making some changes and I became well, I knew that I had to write about this. So I stopped writing about fashion and interior design, which was my kind of milieu for many years, and started writing about health and well-being. And then, of course, all of my experiences as an allergy testing technician. And I just started writing um, about what I had experienced in a clinical setting, and I knew that I wanted to write a book and have somebody pick it up and and publish that book. And funnily enough, I was down in Southern California giving a presentation very much like what I'll be doing when I'm at the Soul Summit in September in Arizona. I was there for a whole life expo and I was invited to have a cover story on a lovely local holistic magazine in Southern California, and who should discover me at that time 
but Louise Hay. I didn't know she was coming for a consultation. I was just told there was somebody who was becoming at 10 o'clock in the morning. And lo and behold, there on the hotel uh, phone, Louise Hay was put through to my room. And she said, this is Louise Hay. And I oh said, my. the Louise Hay? She yes. said, yes, this is here I am, ready for my appointment. So we had a wonderful appointment. And the, the interesting thing was she had had a dream, speaking of dreams, mm -hmm. that she was going to meet somebody who would help her with her health. And yes, she was healthy, but she was doing some things which were not healthy. At the time when I met her, she was 73 years of age. And I just went, boom, 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 this is what we need to do. And I wrote everything down, and off she went half an hour later. And I followed up with her two weeks later, and she said, Caroline, I've never had such energy. I feel so much better. Thank you very, very much. And she was doing something, and, you know, rightly so, with all due respect and best intentions, she was on a path of vegetarianism, and that was weakening her. And I find that over and over and over again with people who would like to be a vegetarian, but yet it's not right for them. It's right for some people, but it's not right for all people. And that was how she was becoming weak. And then what was terrific after that is she got her energy back. She felt wonderful. We did other things as well. I sent her to practitioners for other elements that would be useful. And she went on for many years after that to live a wonderful, vibrant life. And she put me on the map as far as my career was concerned. And, and all my books, The Body Knows, The Body Knows How to Stay Young, which is important as we age, because there is an equation, there is a recipe for staying young. It's not, oh my, now we have to go down a slippery slope and never recover from that. There's definitely, um, you know, elements of staying young that they're practical and people can do this. And so Louise was hugely instrumental in the success of my career and all my books. Of course, the body knows that the body has a wisdom and we can tap into that wisdom. And for years and years and years, every year I did a training in medical intuition. People would come from all over the, the country and indeed from other countries. And then I started to offer an online training where people could learn. And of course, my books are training in and of themselves what to do. And of course, the, the, the key piece, Sandra, is how to tune in. How do you tune in? Well, first, by staying quiet. Second of all, learning a tuning in method, using muscle testing, kinesiology, using a pendulum, staying quiet, staying neutral, and the body will give us that feedback of what it would prefer, what it would like not what we're doing. Yes, of course, we want to do these things because they give us comfort, but the body can tell us, no, this is what I prefer. And then if we follow that, we get, we get the wisdom, we get the guidance. The next step is follow it. And then the changes will occur and they will happen quickly. They don't take months and years. They will happen within a few weeks. It will be evident what the person has discovered through tuning in and how the body then will respond to those changes. So it's very exciting. It is a teachable skill. It's not something that's just the gift of a few people. It's teachable. And in a weekend, which is my trainings have always been a two-day training, then people are tuning in not only to themselves, but to other people as well. So And, and use, using photographs, tuning into photographs. Wow, is that interesting. You bet. <laughs> oh, I'm excited. How can people find out? Are you still doing the two-a-day trainings? I'm so sorry, but I'm now officially retired from yes, doing trainings. Course. I'm not officially retired from doing consultations. That's okay. But from trainings. But all my books are there. And if people do consultations, especially the hour longs, they receive the book and they receive um, a couple of CDs that give them wisdom and knowledge. So they learn a lot about themselves just through the consultations, very much so. And hundreds of hours of the radio show, people can look up Hay House yeah. and your name. Yeah. And it's interesting talking about kinesiology. I remember when I first witnessed kinesiology at play and the muscle yeah. testing, and I was actually reading a book that was saying they, they had 
maybe a thousand people in the audience and they had everyone take a partner and some people had, uh, or there were two envelopes. One had some kind of a sugar substitute, a saccharin. The other one had vitamin C Mm. and across Mm, the board, people's arms stayed strong holding vitamin C and everybody, their arms went down. Um, holding, and they didn't even that, know what was in they there. They had no idea. And just the, mm-hmm. how miraculous our, our bodies are. Um, yeah. So the bo- I just want to read the titles of the books. The Body Knows How to Tune into Your Body and Improve Your Health. The Body Knows How to Stay Young. The Body Knows Diet, Cracking the Weight Loss Code. And Body Knows Cookbook. So, you know, I've always been someone battling eating and weight and things. So just even reading that uh, to tune in, um, um, Mm -hmm. let me, let me back up a little. I was just reading some of the reviews on Amazon and there's just great reviews, but one lady got the body nose cracking the weight loss code for weight loss. And she says she couldn't believe how her skin cleared up. Her persistent Mm -hmm. cough disappeared. and And she says, you know, she's read it twice. And she says, even if, you're not interested in the title, read it anyways. I thought that's just great. Isn't that sweet? Well, it's amazing and it happens very quickly and people don't realize that they're getting sick from the foods that they are eating. For example, I did a consultation for a mother, a nine and a half year old child in um, Buffalo, New York. And this child was having tremendous breathing problems. Couldn't even, you know, barely breathe without having inter- medical intervention and, a, and being on an inhaler. And all we did was took him off wheat flour products and cow's milk products. Within days, that child is breathing. And here they've been here, there, everywhere on antibiotics, all kinds of medicines for asthma and allergies and so forth. Very, very simple. Switch it out. Take out the wheat. Take out the cow's milk products. And he is much, much better. And so this is what people are doing and they don't realize they're doing it to themselves and it's always going to be from the foods they are most commonly eating. The basic garden variety, 15 to 20 foods that people eat every day. So quite simple, just switch out those foods and then those health issues and weight. Weight will drop just by itself. It's it's pretty miraculous. Oh, we love miracles around here. <laughs> yeah, and it's fun because if you switch things out, you 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 say, okay, so I'm going to take wheat out of the diet. Well, what am I going to do? Well, rice. And you know what happens to people that go, for example, they'll go over to Thailand for a two week vacation to one of those wonderful yes. resorts on on the ocean there in Thailand, and they're on rice then, and they're not having wheat at all. They're not having cow's milk products. They come back, they're ten pounds lighter. And they think, what did I do? Well, I didn't have any wheat while I was gone. I didn't have any dairy. And I had rice instead. And so there's the there's the, the little miracle right in there that people can witness for themselves. I mean, and yes, they're going to have wheat on occasion out in the world. But I find if people don't bring those things home, just don't be bringing them in the door. Have them once in a while out in the world, but just leave it alone. Don't take it in and put it in your refrigerator. That is a good way of not... T- tempting people on the home front. Pretty great. Mm -hmm. great. And I would think the whole world of cravings is tied into what we eat. Well, there's a simple fix for cravings. And this is really simple. Okay. Because when people get a craving, they get a craving for a sugar. And oh, I need something sweet. Just stop for a minute and interpret that. What is that? That is the pancreas looking for a quick fix from sugar to balance blood sugars, but the most efficient balancing of blood sugars comes from the breakdown of protein, any kind of protein, be it a nut, a seed, beans, fish, chicken, hard-boiled eggs, whatever the thing is, even good old beef itself, will balance the blood sugar, and that is a slow, steady breakdown of that protein by the pancreas, which then fuels, sends that that proper and correct fueling to balance the blood sugars. And people make that mistake. They say, oh, I've got a sugar craving. I will respond with dried fruit, which they think is healthy and it's not, or an apple, which yes, there's some benefit to an apple, but that's the misinterpretation 
of that particular physical body message. That message that the body is giving needs to be interpreted differently, which means bypass the sugar in any form and go directly to a protein. And that is how a person will handle cravings. And then the next part of cravings, which is really, really big, and this is massive, and it's going to be one of the kernels that I give in my presentation in Arizona, and that is body breakdown that comes from yeast, fungus, parasites, and infection, and bacteria. The body breakdown, the death and decay. So that needs to be arrested with something that tackles this yeast and fungus. And everybody who's alive on the planet is dealing with that. And nobody knows that they are. Some might know. Others might suspect, but they have no idea what to do with that. So when I am in Arizona, I won't be doing any reading readings, but I will be doing short, fast-paced, about a five-minute little mini reading there in Arizona um, on off hours when there aren't any presentations. Right there in the hallway, a little $20, you know, step right up and let's do the one, two, three. But this yeast is huge. And of course, yeast is fed on sugar. It's fed on starch and fed on sugar. There's lots of ways to conquer that yeast that you can get at your health food store. Good old odorless garlic capsules for a start. If there's nothing else, one odorless garlic capsule with each meal, that's a good start. So people don't realize that they're going down cell by cell because of cravings. Cravings come from that yeast that needs to be fed. It is calling out, feed me, feed me, feed me. And so the person then starts consuming the sugar and the starch and it's galloping. It's, it's out of control, galloping. And um, they, they can't stop. And these darling, darling people that are dealing with weight problems, be it you know 5 pounds, 10 pounds, 20 or more, up into the 50s and 60s and beyond, they have this out-of-control candidiasis, candida albicans yeast, which is an easy, easy correct. And yet you look at these big label uh, diseases, major label diseases, cancer, you know, MS, lupus, Epstein-Barr, all these big diseases. In back of those symptom profiles, there's that yeast. And my ex-husband was a registered nurse specializing in oncology. And he would tell me every single one of these cancer patients had this candidiasis listed on their chart. It was there in these cancer patients. And what was interesting is they were given something for these sores in their mouths caused by this yeast and these little white, white specks, little white sores. And they were given a special swish and swallow for the mouth sores or swish and spit for the mouth sores. And I said, oh, man, if they only knew to just swallow that, that, that medicine down, take it into their body instead of swishing it and spitting it out. But there it was, plain and simple, right there on those patient charts. So you have to scratch your head and say, there's a whole, I don't like the word conspiracy, right? but the truth is there. There's the truth, front and center. But hey, nobody wants to address the truth because we don't want to get these people well because then our, you know, our, our money pot will, will shrink. So, but the truth is there. It's easy to do, and I love to teach it. And that's what the body knows principle is all about, is that the body does know. And if we can tap into it and tune into it, and help that body, it's going to recover, it's going to do brilliantly, and it's going to keep being healthy for as long as we're on the earth. And when we were talking about Louise Hay, and you used the word vibrant, that is the perfect word. And I even thinking my grandmother, who lived to be 91, or just one week short of 91, vibrant, healthy, mm-hmm. glowing. Yeah. Glowing, you bet. And as we Well, age, what makes us unglow... Better. Mm -hmm. What takes that glow away is the woe is me, the draggy emotional realm. And then all these foods, caffeine makes a person draggy, sugar, wheat. Oh, people will be tired and have arthritis if they have wheat. It's one of the biggest issues, I think, for arthritis and joint stiffness is wheat and wheat flour products. So take those out 
all of a sudden we'll all be limber and our joints won't hurt anymore. So I love it that it's simple. Don't you love that, Sandra? It's just so simple. Universe makes things simple. We just have to get the information. <laughs> so this is yeah. great. And I love yeah. it, staying quiet, hearing our inner voice, listening to our intuition, that you're blending them all together. Yes. Oh, and it's not thanks. just one thing. See, so many people, and I love it because everyone's questing, they're all researching now and finding the things that work. But they'll find a piece, a one piece or onesie twosies piece, and it's not the whole thing. If they can just get the whole thing, then they can dive right in and get healthy. So that's what I like to present to people. Very good. Through the body nose yeah. and what you teach, is there a way that we can get into our own subconscious? Because some of us have had a habit since we were three years old. And I can't help but think habits are yeah. through our subconscious. Is there a way to get to that? I mean, there must be because you've written the books on it. But well, any words on to, that? To, to, to get into that is, is to really be quiet and let the body speak. Let the mm -hmm. wisdom of the physical body speak. And then how do we tap into the subconscious? We do that by subconscious programming, change, change the scripting. And that's done through meditation, through prayer, through affirmations, right. through subliminal hypnosis CDs. I have different hypnosis MP3s that, that are offered free of charge to each of the clients who come to see me. They're given the right scripting to help them. So all of that, and it's moment by moment, it's daily. It's not, oh, I'll do it now and never do it again. Uh-uh. Because that part of our subconscious mind is running the show and it's very, very strong. It's a strong part that will take us down into the woe is me, this won't work. You know, I've done that before and now we have to do it again or it's too hard. All of that is a really, really strong script that people have kind of front and center. So it's 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 quite a discipline to um you know to stay at the keeper of the gate so that that other voice that other part of our personality doesn't come in and take over yeah that other part i often think of the the um subconscious mind is at the driver's seat you know yeah. the conscious mind it just it just gets to be a passenger every so often it gets to take the wheel yeah. but the subconscious pushes it out of the way and it's like nope i'm driving yeah, yeah. Wow. Caroline. And that's what's happening. So we're being we're playing out the script that the subconscious mind has unless we change it. Mm -hmm. And I think, too, coming into this life, dealing with these things, looking at it from a mm -hmm. part of, OK, we picked this. Let's overcome. Yeah. You know, let's listen. Uh, we only have a few minutes left. Anything else you would like to share and even just talk about people going to your website and how they can be in contact with you and, and get a work with you. Yes, absolutely. So my website is carolinesutherland.com and Caroline is C-A-R-O-L-I-N-E and Sutherland is S-U-T-H-E-R-L-A-N-D, carolinesutherland.com. And my mini readings, the half hour uh, short readings, come up very quickly for people within a few days. The long one-on-ones take longer because there's some reading involved for, for the client. So those are the two best ways to reach me. And I'm very looking forward to being in Arizona with some of these absolutely marvelous speakers, many of whom I've already met and being on circuits over the years with. And we're going to have a, an amazing time at the Soul Summit. And what I want to do is help people to create this vibrancy. So they become very, very attractive. And I don't mean attractive by looking at them by being handsome or, 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 or um, you know, beauty, that kind of mm -hmm. word, the attraction, which really enhances the law of attraction that comes to them through their electromagnetic field, through their aura, if you will, which is changed immediately by making those physical changes. Then they are really operating with the law of attraction. Oh, I love it. Because I know personally, there's so much about how we feel and our emotions and what we put out energetically. And I can't mm -hmm. help but think if you're operating in a healthy body and that even helps radiate whatever that energy is even further yes yes absolutely it's exciting it's very exciting oh well well done thank you caroline for being our guest today well i've really loved it and thank you sandra 
time goes by fast. I've got a big smile on my face. I always love, well, talking to people I don't know, but learning new things because these empower us. And it is about living a powerful Mm -hmm. life now. And, you know, each and every episode, yes, we talk about the afterlife. Our loved ones are around. But we are souls having a human experience here. And there's so much power within us between our intuition and these practices we can do. So to have you, Caroline, be on your journey and take everything that you've learned and now be able to share it to empower others, I think that's just a great gift. And for each one of us, we have things. We're, we're all different, but we can all make a difference. And we learn our lessons, if you want to put it that way, um, and be able to share while we're here on Earth. So one more thank you to Caroline and to our listener. Thank you for being our uh wonderful friend today. I always picture the three of us sitting on the couch together, you, me, and our guest, and just getting to know each other. But you're part of this. Your life is within this show and every book you read and every conference you attend. I do encourage people to go to the Soul Summit Scottsdale.org. There's a there's a possibility I might be able to attend, but my business has takes over on that particular weekend. But the Soul Summit um, comes forth. It used to be the AREI Afterlife Symposium. And now instead of just looking at afterlife, and there's plenty of afterlife information at the Soul Summit, but it's also about living life and living life powerfully. So many people have asked, you know, will there be another uh, afterlife symposium? Well, it's just different, but it's still got some really great information. And um, myself and friends at the AREI working together online even to get the best evidence out there. So our home base for this web uh, for this radio show is we don't die radio.com. Always invite you to visit there and join our listener group on Facebook. We don't die listeners and you can be helped and supported. There's a free audio on we don't die radio.com called how to survive grief. I do acknowledge and know that many of us are brought together because we've had a great loss, but like we mentioned on this show, there can be a, a gift in grief and a gift in every thing that seems to go wrong and bad in our life and take you to a whole nother level as a human being. So in closing, my name is Sandra Champlain. I'm always delighted to be your host on We Don't Die Radio. And I do believe that life is an education for the soul and that your life here on earth is important. So tune in, stay quiet, listen to that inner voice, check out The Body Knows with Caroline Sutherland. So thank you for listening, and we'll see you soon.